Today we're going to talk about an integration technique called substitution. You can look at integration by substitution in two ways. The first way would be by pattern recognition and the second would be by change of variables. The idea here for pattern recognition is if we have an integrand that's a composite function where g of x is the inner function but g prime of x also occurs in the integrand, then we can apply this formula to find the antiderivative. Remember the derivative of this antiderivative would be the integrand. However, in practice it's going to be easier for us to use the change of variables formula. And the idea of this is we're going to let u equal the inner function. And then when we find differential u, we want it to match the derivative of g times dx. Now this sounds kind of complicated, but in practice it's not really that bad. Let's take a look at one more idea here before we start. We know that integration is the opposite operation of differentiation. So for example, we know to find the derivative of a composite function, we need to apply the chain rule. Therefore, if we find the antiderivative of this, we should end up with our original function. And that is actually what is happening when we integrate using substitution. We recognize this pattern and we end up finding the antiderivative. Now just notice that this notation here is a little bit different than the notation used on the previous slide, but the relationship is the same. The derivative of this function would be the integrand. The derivative of this function here would also be the integrand. Remember, big F represents the antiderivative. Okay, so here are our guidelines. We're going to choose a substitution u equals g of x. Usually it's best to choose the inner part of a composite function. Then we're going to calculate differential u, which is g prime times dx. We write the integral, find the resulting integral, and then replace u with g of x to obtain our antiderivative. And then we can check by differentiating. Here are some basic formulas that might help. You may want to pause to review them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First step, we need to identify our u. We're going to let u equal x to the fourth plus two. Now we need to find differential u, which is equal to the derivative of this times dx, so that would be 4x cubed dx. Notice in our integral we do have 4x cubed dx, so now what we can do is perform substitution and rewrite this as u raised to the fourth power, and all of this is just du. Now we'll integrate with respects to u, u to the fifth divided by five plus c, and now we just have to rewrite this in terms of x. So we'll replace our u with x to the fourth plus two. Notice when I wrote this, I wrote it as one fifth. Okay, let's try another. Again, our first step is to identify the u. It's often best to let u equal the stuff that's raised to the power. So our u will equal x to the third plus two. Therefore, differential u will equal three x squared times dx, don't forget the dx. Now if we take a look at our integral, we don't have 3x squared dx, we just have x squared dx. So what we can do over here is divide this by three on both sides. So we would have one third du is equal to x squared dx. I always like to try to make this match the integral exactly so we can do our direct substitution. So now I can rewrite this as this blue part is our u to the seventh. x squared dx is the same as one third du. I'll factor the one third out, and now we integrate. We have one third u to the eighth divided by eight plus c. And lastly, we write this in terms of x. So we'd have one twenty-four times u to the eighth, which is x to the third plus two raised to the eighth plus c. Now this problem you may not know what to let u equal. But notice how the denominator is degree two, the numerator is degree one, so we're gonna let u equal the degree two part. Therefore, du would equal four x dx. Okay, so here's the u. Notice what's left is two x dx, and we have four x dx. So what I'll do is divide by two, so we have one half du will equal two x dx. That'll make it match perfectly. So now we can rewrite this as the integral of the red part would be one half du, and the blue part is our u, so we have one over u. Remember that the antiderivative of one over u is equal to natural log u. Now instead of writing u, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with one plus two x squared plus c. 
Let's go ahead and try another. We'll let the function raised to the power equal our u. So differential u will equal 1 over x. Don't forget times dx. Let's color code our integral. This is our u, so we'd have u to the fourth. And what's left is 2 over x dx, and we have 1 over x dx. So what we can do then is multiply both sides by 2. So we'd have 2 du equal to 2 over x dx. This makes the substitution much easier. So our integral will be u to the fourth, and then this is replaced with 2 du. The two factor the 2 out, and we have du there. So the antiderivative would be 2 times u to the fifth divided by 5 plus c, which is equal to 2 fifths natural log x raised to the fifth power plus c. Now let's try a couple of definite integrals. Finding the antiderivative will be the same, but then we will have to evaluate them at 5 and 2 in this case. Again, if we pick the wrong u, then we'll come back and do it again. If you know your derivatives, it does make picking the u much easier. So if we let u equal natural log x, du would equal 1 over x dx. If we look at the integral, that's a perfect fit. Here's our u, and whatever's left is our du. Now these limits of integration are in terms of x. So when we write this, I'm going to leave them off temporarily. So we'd have the blue part would give us a 1 over u, and the red part would give us our du. Remember, the antiderivative of 1 over u would just be natural log u. But again, our u is actually natural log x. Now this is a definite integral, so we do need to evaluate this now at 5 and 2. So we get an approximate value of 0.8. Or two eight. Okay, our last example. Again, here I see a part that's d degree two, the part that's degree. On this last problem, I see a part that's degree two, another part that's degree one. I'll let u equal the degree two part. This would be our u. Du is two x dx. But if you take a look at our integral, we have x dx. So I'll divide both sides by two, which implies that one half du is equal to x dx. If you're writing this in terms of u, we'd have e to the u, and then a one-half du. Again, I'm leaving off the limits of integration because this is in terms of u now. If I wanted to include them, I'd have to replace x with 0 and 1 in this equation for u. This will equal one-half e to the u. Of course, u is x squared, and evaluated at 1 and 0. which is approximately 0.8591. I hope you found this video helpful.